morning. Thank you for starting your day with Good Day Charlotte. All right, I am excited about this next segment. He is the founder and chairman of Amazon Herb Company. He's a businessman, rainforest conservationist, and a North Carolina native. He's also the husband of the one and only, you might have heard of her, Olivia Newton-John. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're talking about John Easterling, also known as Amazon John with us this morning, along with one of our Good Day Charlotte friends mm -hmm. you might know, Dr. Corinne Weaver. Mm -hmm. How are you, Dr. Doing Weaver? Good. good to see you. This is your Uncle John. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you, John. Uh, great to meet you this morning. This, sure is, you've huh? been talking about him for so long, Corinne. I'm so glad you're here to, uh, to kind of share <laughs> what a journey you have been on. Let's just kind of start, go back to wherever you would like to start, John, where, where your life kind of made a switch, where you felt like you were unhealthy, possibly even dying, yeah. and you found really what, the, what nature had to provide, which changed your life. How, how did this come about? Yeah, well, it did. I, uh, I grew up in North Carolina, right here in Charlotte, as a matter of fact, and I, uh, I went to school here at Geringer. I went to uh, uh, UNC in Charlotte, That's Western so Carolina cool. University, yeah. and, and graduated down in uh, Wilmington. At that point, I sold my car and bought a ticket to Ecuador. I was intent on finding lost cities of gold and Inca treasure. So really being a treasure hunter, but I had a hepatitis, Rocky Mountain spotted fever. I actually had a near-death experience at, at the hospital here in Charlotte. Wow. And coming back from that, it was about 60% of the energy flow. The doctors told me, hey, you're, you know, that's, you're, you're lucky to be alive, and that's good. And I accepted that and kind of went on. And, but my, my journey in the, in the jungles in uh, South America, I was dealing with tribal artifacts and monkey bones and, and a variety of things. And, <laughs> you sound and, like a movie. You sound like yeah. Indiana Jones here, John. Exactly. Well, well, I went through a whole episode of, of, of different kinds of treasure, from gemstones to pre-Columbian artifacts. And then working in the jungle, I would go down with these low-grade fevers left over from my health challenge, mm -hmm. and they just boiled up some Monia de Gato, Shanka Piedra, Sangre de Drago, these botanicals, and gave them to me. I had no expectation of anything happening. I was eating grilled monkey paws and whatever else they were, they were feeding me. Yeah, but, but what happened was, after a couple of days, uh, everything shifted. I was more grounded, the mental acuity came back, and I felt as good as I did before I was sick. And even a couple of more days, I felt better than I'd ever felt in my life. And I thought, wait a minute, all these years I've been coming down, chopping this stuff down, and this is the real treasure. I had 100,000 species of plants growing in the Amazon, only 3% have been studied, you know, for the therapeutic value by Western medicine, and yet almost 30% of our pharmaceuticals come from that. So it's a huge, gigantic, natural uh, pharmacy uh, that can really, I think, address all of the degenerative issues that we're dealing with. So that started my career in plant medicine 34 years ago, and, and that continues. That's unbelievable, and, yeah. and I know you're excited to share this story, because yeah. you, you said for years, you know, you growing up, you saw the results. Right, he would bring yeah. in the herbs from the Amazon rainforest, yeah. and I couldn't breathe, and I was having asthma attacks, and I lived in this area, you know how bad that. asthma yeah. and allergies yeah. are, and he would make me a tea, and here I am with the kitchen towel, breathing in all of these herbs that he would breathe, you know, he would bring in, and I just felt so much better, and I was like, what, what is this stuff? Because yeah. I was on a steroid machine, like breathing in steroids right. every day, and I knew what he had was better, even as a small child. And Isn't I wanted it. I wanted more of it. <laughs> well, we just had a story in our last yeah. block about the opioid crisis and, and how yesterday the mayor <laughs> is trying to put together this plan of how we can lessen the number of opioid deaths here in North Carolina. So, why are we so afraid, John, to to try things that are maybe I hate to use the word normal, but why are we so afraid to try things that are different? Well. You know, I think we ought to give just a real quick snapshot of history of our relationship with the plant kingdom. You know, we've always, since we crawled out of a cave, we've been dependent on the plant kingdom for food, for medicine, for, for fiber. Mm -hmm. You know, we build our houses out of plants. And we've had a relationship, for example, with cannabis for 4,000 years, a documented medicinal relationship mm -hmm. that goes back to Materia Medica in China. So it looks like cannabis originated in the Himalayas but everywhere mankind moved, he took that with him because it was so important. And in fact, the early colonies in America, I think it was Virginia, Massachusetts, required every household to grow cannabis because of its Whoa. value. Whoa, boy, how Davis, times have changed. Eli Lilly, they all had yeah. uh, uh, cannabis medications easily available over the counter. And so we've had 4,000 years of normal relationship with this plant. It's only been interrupted the last 80 years, and now we're re-engaging that relationship. 
you know, like a tsunami moving across the, uh, the planet. And the opioid crisis is, is a perfect example of that. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, 1996, California was the first one to introduce a medicinal cannabis program. It was so successful, it spread really quickly, you know, in the, in the Western states. Colorado in 2012, you know, went to a adult use. And so everyone was watching Colorado, expecting, uh-oh, here goes the crime rate's going to go yeah. up, we're going to have all these issues. But in fact, what happened was the crime rate went down, uh, opioid prescriptions went down 20%. Opioid deaths went down 20%. And you can't refute that. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing. You can't refute yeah. it. And the same thing has happened in every state that has gone, you know, full adult mm -hmm. use, right. meaning mm -hmm. it's easily available. Yeah. The prescription for anti-anxiety drugs, antidepressants, and, and opioids, yeah. which is yeah. killing, you know, tw over 20,000 people a year just in America. And there's never been a death from cannabis. Well, never. I know, I know you and your your other half, your your better half, uh, Olivia Newton <laughs> yeah. John. Which I think we got a picture of the two of you guys uh, because you got married not too long ago. What? Uh, ten years ago. Okay, ten Thank years ago. And, and I know she. There, there we go. Great yeah. shot of you too. She's also a wonderful ambassador uh, yeah. for sharing this okay. information as well. And, and before we run out of time, Dr. Weaver, if people um, they might be skeptical, they may not be. But if they have questions, if they want to kind of dive into this, to so just experiment to see how their life might change by getting into this world of CBD and cannabis. How do you recommend starting? Really reach out to people that know. Okay. You know, uh, reach and, out to yeah, yeah. Reach out to experts. Okay. You know, this you don't have to do this alone. Yeah. Um, reach out mm -hmm. to some people. You know, there's enough research. There's enough doctors doing the work now. Um, that you don't have to be yeah. scared, be fearful. If you are fearful, then that's when you need to reach out yeah. to someone that can help you. I, I think that's wonderful. We're going to link all this on our website. You can watch this full interview again, and, and we'll have uh, Dr. Corinne Weaver's information and, and John uh, as well. And, and your story is fascinating. Thanks for yeah. coming on here. I really appreciate right, you. You're welcome anytime, and you can bring that, that other lady with you. You know, if she ever stops <laughs> by the much Charlotte area. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, thank you. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back after this. All right, so stay tuned for Dr. Weaver on TV. She's on TV about once a month in Charlotte. Um, I wanted to take a moment before I introduce Dr. Weaver to uh, tell you about the two companies that we have, after much consideration, <laughs> decided to have available to our patients in the office. Uh, Metagenics is a company that our patients will recognize because we carry a lot of their products. They've been around for years. Dr. Weaver will tell you a little more about why we chose these two companies. But we certainly looked at, gosh, over 100, probably. More. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, I did want to let you know we are offering, for anyone who would like to pre-order the Metagenics CBD oil tonight, we're going to offer a 15% discount. So C. Marie or Amy, if you'd like to pre-order Believe it or that. not, they just came out June 10th, and they've been on back order. So apparently uh -huh. we were supposed to have some here. Hopefully tomorrow, <laughs> according to our tracking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> better late than never. <laughs> yeah. But for for the inconvenience of us not having it, for you to leave with it this evening, if you do pre-order it, we'll take 15% off that purchase price. Um, also, we have Amanda here who's going to speak with us a little bit later about Green Compass and give you guys some details about that. That's the other company that we are going to offer here in the office. And they have a preferred customer program where if you'd like to order directly online as a preferred customer, you can get 20% off. So I just wanted to let you know right away about those little specials so you can kind of be thinking of them as we're going through listening to Dr. Weaver sharing all the, all the good information. And lastly, Amanda is being so kind as to share a small sample with everyone who's present here tonight. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and so she has two kinds. She has the broad spectrum, which has less than 0.3% .3 THC. And then for anyone who would prefer a THC free version, if you would just wave your hand just a little bit so that I can see and she will make sure that you get the appropriate sample. So, Everybody all right, a little bit broad THC. spectrum all around, yeah. the, around the house. So without further ado, um, she's our clinic director, she's our leader. I don't have to tell you guys how passionate she is about getting people well naturally, Dr. Corinne Weaver. 
Um, I wanted to show you the video. I don't know if you've seen the video. Some of you guys have already seen it because we were, you know, in TV in April. And after that, you can imagine how many emails I got. Like, I don't even want to tell you. A lot. And so from all the emails, I'm like, let's just put together a class. And I've been studying this stuff. Um, not as much as my uncle has been because he's been in the industry, industry for about 30 years. So he's been studying the marijuana plant for over 30 years. So I've been picking his brain and he's been texting me back and forth, share this, share that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you're so much, right? And I only have like 45 minutes. So what are we going to get into? So I really picked the biggest things that I figured you guys have the questions about because when, I mean, like, like he said on TV, I mean, the CBD, the marijuana plant's been around for years and years and years. How come all of a sudden you're seeing everybody's carrying it now? Like you can actually buy some right down here. What makes theirs different than ours different and blah, blah, blah. So we're going to talk about that and prices and why is it more and all of that. It's a really big, in fact, when my uncle, when he actually, he has an analyzer and he would test different companies. And I think it was over 400 companies that he tested. And he was only saying like, maybe two were good. And they're like 400. I was like, really? These are the only ones that you like are good? What's wrong with the other ones? And what he was finding is a lot of them didn't even have the right properties. And they were mixed with other things. It wasn't even the right plant. And they were having a lot of uh, bacterial issues like E. coli. So don't just pick up CBD just right down the street on someone that you don't really trust. And that's why we wanted to provide it here. And years ago, I used to provide it here. And I got my hand like really slapped on, um, meaning like, don't do that. And not that I would lose my license, but they just said, don't do it. We will question, you know, a whole lot of things because CBD is actually a drug. You know, I just read a whole book about no more meds and CBD. Is it? Well, that's why the pharmaceutical company has called it a drug. And so really, if you look at metagenics, the reason they are, they're calling their product hemp oil, because they can't call it CBD oil, they are calling it hemp oil. And so you'll find that more as like the bigger companies will probably call it hemp oil because of the CBD, because it's considered a drug and all states can't carry it. But for hemp, all 50 states can carry that now. Um, um, and so it's becoming more and more available, which is nice because there's a lot of people who suffers with anxiety. Nobody here, though, right? Nobody has anxiety. Nobody has any stress. Like, so raise your hand if you have no stress. Okay. Um, that looks like everybody might have a little bit. So, you know, can everybody benefit from CBD? And so we're going to talk about how some people can benefit and there's some people that can't benefit and knowing the dosage and all that is so important. So on TV, I was mentioning, well, you know, do you just want to try it? Yeah, you can try it. But if you're really like looking for your health, you may want to talk to someone that's been studying, that's been researching. And that's why you're here today to get more information, because it is something that you can mess up your health, especially it interacts with other medications. Medication, So you don't want to have to take something and it interacts with another medication that you're taking that you may be using for something else. Your doctor's not going to like that, right? So welcome. <laughs> We're going to go through the little slideshow here. So the rich history, that's what I was talking about. The, the plant's been around for thousands of years and now we're just getting our hands and it was in the 1980s um, or hold on, let me make sure I get the dates right because I'm going to be quoted on this. Yeah, 1980 was when they actually were able to find CBD separately. So that, there's a part of the plant that we're not even really fully aware of yet of what the component of. So when Amanda was saying, you know, do you want to do the full spectrum? What that means is you're going to be getting a lot more different parts of the plant of not just CBD. CBD is a component of it. And that's the one that we study the most. And of course we know more about the THC component. THC is the plant um, leaves that makes you psychoactive. So obviously we don't want the psychoactive part of the plant. <laughs> Nobody here wants that. Um, and there's my uncle right there. So he is a big fan of the marijuana plant. And he, what he's working on right now, which is kind of really interesting, he's working on working on the soil, uh, the dirt that grows the plant. And he said that's really the key component. Because there's a lot of companies that will grow marijuana, grow the plant. And just like if you were to grow a garden today, you know, sometimes people do extra work and take care of the soil and the dirt and get the nutrients in the dirt so the plant is better. 
and it has more nutrients. And there's some people that will just grow marijuana and not take care of the soil and the marijuana plant and the plant doesn't give you as effective results. So that's, that's one thing to kind of consider there. So what he's doing is really testing different dirt, finding different probiotics. And he's really been about bacteria and the correlation of the healthy of the plant. And so he sells the, basically the dirt, um, to other companies because he found if he can give them the right dirt and the components of the soil, then the plant would be healthier. And so it's all about that ecosystem and all of that good stuff. So, all right, we'll kind of talk about hemp versus marijuana. I kind of went over it just a little bit, but it's like looking at um, a cabbage and a turnip. So a cabbage and a turnip, they're this, they come from the same family, but they're two different plants, right? And they have two different benefits. That's the same thing when we're looking at hemp versus the marijuana. So what we were really looking at is the endocannabinoid system and interacting with that endocannabinoid system. It's what we're finding is the more research, it really is a system that is like the nervous system. And how much do I love the nervous system? It's like everything for me. I love the nervous system. So that endocannabinoid system has receptor sites. And there's receptor sites that they're finding to help balance out the body. I thought I was going to really look at these notes. And obviously, I'm not looking at any of these notes. I think I got it on my head. I'm like just carrying it here. But what I was going to say was, the endo- have you heard about the endocannabinoid system? Is that the first time you've kind of heard about that? Yeah. Well, of course. Yeah. You already read it. You're good. You know about all about the endocannabinoid system. I understand it. Uh, yeah, so that's what I have on questions. If you actually were here earlier, and did you have questions specifically about the endo, endocanna, endocannabinoid so system? That system? Yes. That so that's a system. Never heard that, never before. Heard that before. So basically, it's like, you know, when we learn about the lymphatic system, and we've learned about the nervous system, and now we're learning about this endocannabinoid system that's within every system of our body. And it's just acting like balancing homeostasis. And things that can help the endocannabinoid system is going to help our stress. And so people that are high, and that's why we're finding CBD very helpful for people that have high anxiety. So if you're a person, that has very high anxiety, maybe CBD might work best for you. If you're a person that's already chill and relaxed and nothing really is going on in your life, maybe you don't need some CBD. It actually may cause depression. So if you're a person that's kind of more depressed than anxiety, we find that certain CBD shouldn't um, it actually it may create more depression. So that's something to think about. Um, because, you know, CBD is kind of really known to really help cancer. And so a lot of, in fact, this one patient in particular, she was having cancer and um, she was doing high doses of CBD. And once I kind of opened up and we kind of went over supplements and stuff and she was feeling really depressed. And I said, well, how much CBD? And she was doing like lots, a lot of CBD because she heard it was good for her. And she just needed, like she heard Olivia Newton-John talk about how great it was. And so here she is loading herself with CBD, but it was actually causing her to be, have depression. And I linked the two and I was able to link the two because I know about the endocannabinoid system. So we reduced the amount and changed the formula just a little bit for her to help her with her cancer and not have her depressed because some people can have cancer and be depressed. But for her, she was an upgoing type of personality. So I knew it was different. It was creating that depression kind of in her. So that's a very important part of it. So yeah, it's a learning process, you know, with every single person, I don't have like a magical formula, but what I do what I do do, which I was out of work. Um, I work like I always start with start small, you know, with people that are in acute or chronic pain. Um, and pain is different for everyone. I'm not in your body, so I can't feel your level of pain. And there's no way to really determine how much pain you're in other than you telling me on a scale from one to 10, 10 being the worst and one being no pain at all. I don't know what your pain levels are. So open communication, especially with your doctor. Uh, In fact, I was just talking to a patient just recently and she was like, I was having this, but I wasn't telling anybody. And I was like, you need to tell people. That's the learning process of how we know that we can help you. But in that, you always want to start small, titrate up. So we have different levels of 
pain patients that we work with. And if you're having any type of neurological pain, which in my understanding is the worst type of pain, it's like the highest level, like trigeminal neuralgia, if you've heard of that. It's actually a nerve that's, uh, they call it the suicide pain. It's actually called suicide disease because the pain is so bad. And so the trigeminal nerve affects the face. So anytime that anybody touches the face, if Wang gets in the face, they have to brush their teeth, they have to eat, they're in excruciating pain. And so I know at that level, when we're going to dose CBD, we're going to start slow, but we're going to titrate pretty fast up to help with the level of pain. And then once we get to that level of they're feeling a, there, and you should feel it quick. It's not something like you're going to take and you're going to wait like five days to feel a difference. Usually the person is going to know. Me, me, it's really quick because I've been using different type of herbs, I guess, for a while. I'm very, and I'm very in tune with my body. Very, be in tune with your body. Like listen to your body when you're trying anything. And when I tell people when you're taking certain supplements, you kind of want to know that it's really helping you, not just to take stuff, just to take stuff. Today, I had a guy come to see me. Me. Um, he had a cooler of supplements. I think there was like 40 different supplements in there. And he wanted to like literally go over every single supplement he's taking and why and all of this. And I was like, oh my gosh, how much time of the day? I got a class tonight. But I did. I spent the time with him and we went through each one. And he really didn't even know why he was taking it or he heard it was good from something else. And, and so I looked at his blood work and we came, came up with a plan. And now I'm like, now you have a plan instead of taking like 50 supplements a day. I don't know how this will be we get through that. Um, but fa- learning the facts versus fiction. And, you know, you know, with this, CBD, a lot of people think it's going to get you high. And that's the first fact. CBD is not going to make you high. Um, I think being um, people thinking it getting high, like, oh, I can't do that. I can't go to work because of, if I take CBD, I can't go to work because I'm a test positive for THC. Even if you do the full spectrum, it's not going to test positive for THC and it's not going to make you high. So don't worry about you taking some and not being able to function for the rest of the day. Um, another thing is that it can provide lots of anti-inflammatory components. So that's again in that um, endocannabinoid system. So not only is it anti-inflammatory, but it also helps that part of that nervous system that I always talk about is the parasympathetic nervous system to help you relax and chill out. And that's why I tell people to take deep breaths. Everybody with me and relax. And how much just taking a deep breath can just change everything within your body. It's pretty amazing. Um, and also it's been, I mean, research has found over 50 different diseases and conditions that CBD has been able to help. And I'll have some of these links. Um, if you want to do more research, I have all these links that I got all this, all this stuff from, from the research that has been published, which is great to have the research and having the, um, publications now. So we already talked about the anxiety and depression, and there's a big link between the two. So, How I describe this, you know, if you're having more anxiety, what we have found with research and with patients I've worked with, CBD is a better option for them. Depression, it's different. So I wouldn't necessarily go to you're depressed, I'm going to give you CBD. I don't automatically think about that, but I think about more the anxiety component. And then I try to get obviously to the cause of the problem because we, as much as I love CBD, I know it's not the miracle for everything. And when you're working with the endocannabinoid system, it's working with stress things like the breathing thing I talk about. It's about nutrition. You can't eat a McDonald's, not sleep, drink caffeine all day, and have a stressful job and take CBD at night and think that's going to fix your problems. Okay? Uh, I just want to make that clear. Because a lot of people think they can still eat crap and, you know, do all these things and just take CBD and everything's going to be all right. You need to do the other things. The other things are just as important. CBD is just an added component when you're already really trying all these things. And a lot of times patients, when they come to see me, they are trying. You know, they are already eating a nat- you know, as much as they can and good nutrition. They're already exercising. They're already trying to sleep. They are doing those things and hydrating and drinking water. So they're already doing things to be healthy. It's just... They're 
they're still having anxiety. They're still having inflammatory processes. They're still having things going on that CBD can just be added on because you don't want to have to go through a bottle a day. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, because this stuff can be very expensive. So you don't have to do a bottle a day. You want to be able to maybe just take a couple drops at night, you know, two or three drops a night when you've had a really stressful day and you just want to take a couple of drops to kind of calm you down so you can sleep better. And it's not an everyday thing. And it's not something that I recommend for everybody. Um, that's one thing I want to get straight because people automatically assume it's the miracle. How many of you guys have you heard? Is it the miracle drug? You know, the first thing I got into, the whole reason I got into CBD years ago when I was saying I had it on the shelf and people were like, no, no, um, is because I was working with uh, kids that were having seizures. And what I found, um, in fact, a pediatric neurologist recommended me try CBD for these kids that was having, that was having seizures. And I said, oh my goodness, that's a great option. So I was working with kids. Um, and as we were starting to work with them, I recommended, um, CBD for the parents. And of course we couldn't find it here. You had to go like in a hidden place. You can't find it anywhere. And I knew a couple sources I was referring to. And so they were able to get it and we were able to see some differences in these kids and you know with seizure medications and I'm talking about a pediatric neurologist was recommending it for his patients instead of giving them heavy seizure medications that's amazing that's awesome that they were allowed to do that um, and then I got my hand slapped and I stopped doing it for years and now I'm like they're selling CBD down there like why can't I sell CBD um, so finally now it's like I said it's legal and it's um, able they were able in North Carolina to get the hemp and one of the reasons why I use Green Compass is because they're actually not because I went to UNC Wilmington which I love me um, but they're based out of Wilmington. And Amanda's going to talk a little bit about that company a little bit later, but it's a local company and I can feel a little bit more safe because I am in the state. Every state is different. Um, and every state has different laws and I'm in the state of North Carolina and me being a doctor, I obviously want to give you the best product that I can that's available, but also get to be in my state regulations so I can keep my license and keep practicing for you guys. <laughs> also has very neuroprotective properties. And what that means is brain. And how much do we love the brain? Everybody's talking about the brain. Everybody's talking about gut and brain. But what we find is really helpful for dementia, for Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, things like that. So anything that's neurological that you're thinking that you or a family member has, maybe CBD is not really the answer, but it can be helpful for them in treating these certain conditions conditions that are causing dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, really good studies on that. I mentioned already seizures and how it calms down the seizure activity. So if we know it's helping people with Parkinson's, that we know it's the GABA, it's the it's the dopamine receptors in the brain that's causing the shaking. And we're finding like literally have patients that shake and they can take the CBD and all of a sudden, you can see their whole body and the whole dynamic change. It's pretty amazing. And that's the endocannabinoid system that we're talking about. Also, we're finding good benefits for the heart. What's still number one disease in our country is... High blood pressure? Yeah. Well, heart disease, still number one. Yeah, heart disease and stroke. So CBD is known to really help the heart. Again, how does it help it? By reducing your stress, because they're finding it's not they're finding it's not high cholesterol, because people are still having heart disease. And how many years have we been giving high cholesterol medication? Lots and lots of years. So high cholesterol medication is not really going to help you in your heart disease. Really, what's going to help is inflammation. So what they're finding was creating heart disease is inflammation. So that's how CBD is able to help is keep the inflammation levels down. It's not necessarily you have high cholesterol that guarantees you to have a heart problem. Not true. Because the heart, um, because liver actually makes cholesterol, but it doesn't really affect the heart like we thought it did. And I'm not going to get into that because that's not really our discussion tonight. <laughs> Um, I think it could do a lot better than I can and explaining more about the endocannabinoid system. We're just going to walk, uh, watch this little quick video. In the early 1990s, the endocannabinoid system was discovered by researchers studying bioactive compounds in the cannabis plant. 
The endocannabinoid system, or ECS, is a biological system that works throughout the body and plays diverse roles in regulating various aspects of health. For example, its actions on the central and peripheral nervous systems are numerous, such as helping to moderate stress responses and pain sensations, supporting mood and memory, and performing immunomodulatory functions, like reducing inflammation, to name a few. The ECS is made up of signaling molecules called endogenous cannabinoids, or endocannabinoids. These lipid-derived molecules are released from cells in an on-demand basis. Endocannabinoids bind to cannabinoid receptors located throughout the body and are broken down by enzymes, leading to their inactivation. Several health conditions have been associated with disturbances or imbalances within the ECS. The ECS is important in maintaining balance within various aspects of human physiology, and a healthy lifestyle as well as hemp oil extracts can further support the balance of this system. Therefore, promoting the function and balance of the ECS has potential for clinical relevance. Certain plants, such as hemp, display a presence of plant-derived cannabinoids known as phytocannabinoids that can interact directly with receptors and inhibit the enzymes involved in breaking down the body's own endocannabinoids, thus making them bioavailable longer. Over 80 different phytocannabinoids have been identified, with cannabidiol, or CBD, being the best known. Although research has shown CBD has many potential applications, including neuroprotection and and reducing symptoms of anxiety, nausea, and inflammation, among others, it is not the only phytocannabinoid. In the cannabis plant, other phytocannabinoids have specific and complementary properties and work together with other plant bioactive components, such as terpenes, which exert unique therapeutic effects. This is known as the entourage effect. There is an increasing body of research on the ECS and phytocannabinoids with enormous opportunity for more discoveries related to human physiology. So it's, re it's really nice to um, be able to work with some companies now and working with doctors that are actually going to be using this on a daily basis for more research. Because the thing is, you know, it hasn't been available for so long. And now having the availability and being able to use it as doctors to help patients, we'll have more research that goes out so more people can benefit, which is fantastic. It's all moving back towards the plant, back to the roots. Guys, you know, back to the roots. All right, Amy, there we go. Let's see here. So I mentioned pain. Um, you know, pain is very subjective, which means pain and like I can't feel it. It's all in your body. Um, so what we have found is that I've found that CBD has been very helpful for people that are very either acute. I use it a little bit differently versus a, a chronic and it, acute. I know it's funny. It's acute. It's acute pain. Um, so acute pain is like sharp stabbing, going to hurt like really bad. Like you just hurt yourself very short, hopefully short lived pain. Um, but there's some people that say they have that type of pain every day, which is horrible. And then there's that chronic, like dull, achy, just pain er, kind of globally everywhere type of thing. Um, it's actually been known to help with weight too. Um, so there's some studies coming out how it can help with reduction of weight, which is kind of interesting. Uh, so that's kind of a new I have a question mark on there because it's kind of a new type of research that I thought I'd just throw out there. I went and call it like, oh, I'm going to take this and lose weight again with a healthy diet and nutrition and all of this. But it could be helpful in establishing those neuroprotective inflammation because a lot of people, why they gain weight and why they have weight issues, a lot of times it's because it's inflammatory. You know, it's inflammatory processes. So once you get rid of a lot of the inflammation in the body, then the weight just naturally kind of comes off. So there's also different types of CBD products. Now, Metagenics is the only one that's going to have the like the liquid form. But the reason I had the green compass as well, and I don't know if we have any samples of... Um, the creams, the topicals. Yeah, so there's some topicals that I've been able to help with patients with like eczema, psoriasis, um, and just like specific like, okay, I have pain right here and I just want to rub something on. So we have some topicals that are really nice to use for those cases, um, especially any kind of skin skin disorders. And, you know, a lot of this, like I talked about earlier, who can take CBD? Um, 
not that I'm saying I believe everybody could try it, um, but knowing more about your system, what we're finding is there's a company called Endocanado um, Health, and I just came across this by doing some research in the last few weeks. Um, there was a big study um, with Sacred. I don't know if you guys ever signed up for the Sacred Plant Series. If you look at a, if look it up online, it was called the Sacred Plant Series. It was on last year. My uncle was in that for many many episodes, and they keep doing research on this, and they just sent me about having your um, genetic test. So, uh, when was it last year? Maybe two years ago, I got my 23andMe done, and you can go through 23andMe or Ancestry. Have any of you guys ever done any genetic testing? Okay, so if you write, it's like a saliva test you can do, and basically from that saliva test, there's a certain marker, it's the CMDT marker, that if it's a problem, you may have a problem with the endocount. And that's when we're like that study I was telling you about the cancer patient got more depressed. That's how we're finding out well, she probably had that genetic marker as well. Guess who else has that genetic marker? That would be me. So um, you probably see me as pretty happy. Go, I'm pretty like that all the time. I don't really have a depression. I've never really been depressed, but I know that can be genetic too. Um, you know, cause the people will tell me, well, my mom or dad were depressed and I have a tendency to be more depressed and those kind of things. And I'm, I'm thankful that I don't suffer with depression. Um, but if I take a lot of CBD, I probably would suffer with depression because I have a double marker in my CMT, uh, CMT, CDMT, um, which is a genetic marker where I'm double. So there's something called homo and hetero. And you probably maybe have gotten into MTHFR. Have you heard of MTHFR? Know what that is? Okay. All right. So that's another genetic marker to find out how you methylize B vitamins. Very important to know. Again, I had that marker. Um, and so for years, I'm taking like B12, methyl B12, and it's not doing anything for me. And I'm like, why? This stuff is great for so many of my patients and helping everybody else, but it wasn't helping me. Then I found out I had that marker and I needed hydroxyl B12. Same thing with the CBD. So you can actually, and I haven't sent it in yet because I'm actually contacting the company. I want more information on this, but you can actually send them your genetic thing, uh, genetic marker, and they can tell you exactly how much CBD would be better for you. And I've been doing it for a while, but I've always, I only need like a couple of drops if I do need it. Um, I don't definitely, I don't, don't need CBD. I haven't really taken it every once in a while when I'm like, oh, I just take it when I'm feeling like overly stressed, I'll take a little bit. Um, but I feel like I don't, I'm saying I'm perfect. Okay. I don't live in a perfect world, believe me, <laughs> but I don't really need it as much as I could tell other people would need it. Um, and I I believe it's probably because of my genetics on that. So there is some to, something to say for those genetics. Um, and that's something that we're looking in and that's something that's more uh, desirable. Did I lose you guys there? Did y'all, I know. Okay, so that goes into the question, how much do I need? Um, I was going to give you what the Mayo Clinic, because um, a lot of people are like, hey, the Mayo Clinic, they know what they're doing, right? Um, so the Mayo Clinic, they've done a lot of scientific research, and I'm just going to read this out to you, but this is what they have found to be helpful when you're dosing CBD. Isn't that great that they're actually using CBD and researching this? So chronic pain is 2.5 to 20 milligrams of CBD is what they're finding that helpful. Now, now realize it says 2.5 to 20, and then epilepsy, which is your seizures, needs 200 to 300 milligrams. So when I was working with my seizure patients and we were trying to figure out the dose, that would have been helpful like now. This was like you know eight years ago when I was working with these, and we finally figured out the dose. But 200 to 300 milligrams, that's a high dose to help with seizures. But a lot of people don't realize. They'll say, oh, I tried it. It didn't work. Work. And I'm like, well, first of all, what brand did you use? What did you use? What did you dose? I mean, all the things, you know, what are you using it for? So that's kind of good for you guys to kind of look into that. Um, they're also finding movement problems like due to Huntington's disease as about 10 milligrams of CBD per kiloweight of body weight. And they need it daily for six weeks. But what they're finding with the movement type disease, they're seeing results with that. Sleep, disor- sleep disorders, it says 40 to 160. So it depends how bad your sleep disorder is. Um, but sleep disorders, 40 to 160 milligrams. MS, 
Um, they're finding 2.5 to 120. And the studies that they are found is that they really need it daily for about 15 weeks. And they're seeing reduction of the MS. It's pretty cool stuff. Um, schizophrenia is pretty high dose. We're looking at 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams of CBD. But they're, at least they're seeing that there is results and knowing that difference is amazing. And then the last one they had the study on is glaucoma, which may be interesting to some people. And they're saying 20 to 40 milligrams for glaucoma. Now, again, it's not everybody, right? Just because it, just, just because it has a diagnosis doesn't mean that that's going to work best for you. Like I said, it's probably good to find out a little bit about genetics, find out the whole entire picture of how you're, how you're doing overall. But it was really neat to kind of see some research on that. Um, and how to use. So again, with the titration, um, when you're placing and anything that you're doing tincture wise, or you're using anything extracted and using from the plant, appreciate the plant that gave it to you. Like, don't just like throw it down the tank and, you know, move on. Like usually what I do when, especially if I'm using CBD, I just put a few drops underneath my tongue and we like to do what we call sublingual. And that means underneath your tongue and just hold it there and let it absorb. A lot of times people can feel a difference just with that. And we're going to, you want to pass some samples? Okay. I can leave them here. People can who would like a sample to try right now just for kicks yeah Amanda's going to come out and we're going to we're going to try this out together one or two drops I think anybody can have unless you're you know perfect like me and you don't need a couple drops (laughs) (laughs) who would like to yeah thank you Um, so we carry bought me some up here a couple weeks ago and I've been using it and I read the instructions and it said she said that you told her to use a couple drops, and I read the instructions. And it said use the whole bottle. I'm sure. <laughs> so I've been using that. Did you start with a couple of drops first? Yeah, I started with a couple Okay, of okay. And it didn't really help me sleeping, but now I'll use a milliliter mm-hmm. every night, and I sleep like a baby. <laughs> so, so you're already sleep. seeing. Yeah, I have a lot of joint pains from surgery and, and stuff, so. So you, you may need a lot of dosage for that. You know, like I was telling Carrie, I mean, I don't know you and I don't know your history and all this. So I'm always like, start slow. Cause you don't know. Right. But yeah, go ahead. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, uh, so that dosage is not for everybody. Not overdosing no, no. So I don't know what kind you got, so I'm not sure. But, the, uh, got the Oh, you bought it from us. So yeah, you, then I know what you got, right? I'm like, well, make sure you got the right one. <laughs> um, so one, so one dosage of the 500. Do the math for me. 500 and 30 is. Yeah. No. Five. No, you want to do um, the other way. Yes, Dr. Sarah knows. 16. So you're getting 16 milligram dosage of the CBD. So now you know. You're not getting 500. Is that what you're thinking you're getting? (laughs) Yeah, so you're getting 16. Yeah, so you're getting six. So let's go back to that sleep study, right? What was that? Or did you write write that down for me? So it said 40 to 160. So you must not have a complete disorder. You were just having some trouble sleeping. Well, I was just having joint pain. Oh, so you're in more in the chronic pain, which is 2.5 to 20. Yeah. So you're on the higher end. So you, your pain levels, you know, like I tell patients, are you zero is nothing and 10 is really high. Where are you at? You have to just kind of tell me that because I'm not in your body. So you may be having that chronic pain that's been, I don't know how long it's been going on for years or not. So 16 may be a right dose for you. So what I would do also with you is stay on 16 for maybe two weeks And then try to titrate and go back down and see if it's just as effective. Because what happens is you're feeding those receptor sites in the the cannabinoid system and the nervous system. It all kind of works together. You're feeding that. And what's going to happen, you're going to get enough and then you you don't need as much, which is going to be great. 
I've lost weight too. Oh, so you are on the study. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I told my wife, I was like, I went to the beach this morning with my dad, and we ate fried food all week. Oh. <laughs> and I, I, I fluctuate a lot. And I'm like, I got home, and I was like, I lost weight. I lost weight. weight. It yeah, it doesn't make sense. Well, you know, to be honest, when you can sleep better, your body can function better just in general. So getting the CBD for you, you were not having a restful sleep. Yeah. And so for and digestively, it's been a lot better too. See, it's just fixing him. Every, man, you really needed that CBD. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So very, yeah, how many drugs? Everybody wants some drugs. Did everybody try some drugs? You're supposed to split the dose and do it twice a day. You're saying these numbers, like 16. Good question. So Kathy had a question that you guys might be interested in. You know, with some supplements, I tell people take breakfast, lunch, and dinner kind of throughout the day. and depends on what type of supplement. With CBD, you don't need to do that. You take when you need it and the dosage you need it at that time. So it's not like you're building up, like take a couple here in the morning, take a couple in the afternoon. No, just do it that one time of what doses you need. Like I have people with the pain, the chronic pain, um, and I tell them, you know, start slow, couple days, go up a little bit each time till you actually feel a difference. But you don't want them to like drink the bottle, you know, right? When I've had some patients do that and I'm like, why did you do that? Um, they were like, I just wanted relief. And I was like, oh goodness. Okay, because it's like literally, you're feeding your receptor sites around your whole nervous system. And what's cool about it is your body's going to pick what it needs the most. So when you're doing it, it's going to be like, well, it's inflamed more in the knee. So it's going to focus on, you know, helping repair and inflame the knee. And you're like, well, I'm having pain here. And the body's like, well, the knee needs it more, you know? So it's going to go to those certain places first until it builds up until you need it. And then titrate down where you don't need it anymore. And it's not something that I feel like everybody needs to take, you know, a milliliter for the rest of their life. But some people under a lot of stress and under chronic pain and they need something. And we know pharmaceutical drugs, what are they offering? And what are they doing to your liver? You know, so, you know, CBD is a great option for them. But that's a good, that's a good note there. Let's see, final notes. I don't really have any final notes. You had some really good questions. Anybody else have any specific questions? What's the difference between the, you've got the 750, you've got the 500. So that's a higher dose. So I have, we have 500, 750, and we have 1,000. So how, I mean, how, do you, how would you know? So depending, like, if someone was having more nerve-type pain, I'm going to go ahead and just start with them with a 1,000. I'm not going to mess with going with the lower dose. If someone having a lot of anxiety and they can't sleep and having, like, they're coming to me like this, we're going we're gonna to start with the higher, depending on what I'm treating is how I usually go with that. But that's a, that's a good question as well. Um, for, all of our, for all of our patients, if you have a question about specific dosing for your case, feel free to send us an email, and then we can, if we didn't get a chance to answer your question tonight, and we can do that through email as well. Final notes. I did write something that I wanted to talk to you guys about was um, omega-3 fish oil. You know how much I love omega-3s? Um, they actually increase the effects of CBD when you do it together. So you know how I'm always like, take fish oil at night. And people are like, why? And I'm like, take fish oil at night. Don't ask me a lot of questions. Let's do it. Um, but no, it, it helps me. It helps your brain. And it helps your joints. And it helps your heart. And it helps everything. So getting omega threes but if you're actually taking a fish oil you may need less cbd um because it, like i said it works together and it's very effective together so that's a key component that i've researched and found so i thought i would share that information i know i try to share as much information as i could amanda do you want to talk a little bit about green compass sure okay uh, so i'm amanda phillips thanks for joining us tonight um, i am an advocate with green compass and um, this company is actually just really special. Uh, it came about um, with a husband and wife team, and the wife, Meredith Cook, was taking CBD to help with her postpartum depression. Um, after her second child, she just didn't feel herself. She was taking it, the fog was lifted, and she was like, this is great. You know, my, my son, who's five, has extreme anxiety. I wonder if this would help him too. So she called the brand of the CBD that she was taking, and she said, can you tell me what's in this? And the company couldn't tell her what was in it. She said, well, it's fine for me, but you know, I want transparency for my children. I want to know exactly what's in this bottle before I give this to my kids. So she looked at her husband, Sterling, who is a farmer, and said, Sterling, I can't find a regular <clears throat> brand to give our children. 
know, why don't you make some of this for me? And he kind of looked at her and said, oh, you know, that's fine. So they talked with some of their close family friends, um, the Wooten brothers, they're sixth generation farmers. They were actually part of the North Carolina hemp pilot program. So um, they kind of helped you know, distinguish the mother seed, they planted it. Um, all of this company's operations is based in Wilmington, North Carolina, like Dr. Weaver mentioned. Uh, and we're really the only vertically owned company in the U.S. right now. Um, that means that we do everything from cultivating the soil, planting the seeds, we use uh, CO2 extraction. It's a really clean extraction method for getting you know, the crops out of the ground. We bottle it and we ship it all right there. Um, if you look at some other companies out on the market, they cannot tell you, you know, where their farms are. They can't tell you where it's processed. They can't tell you all these things. So that's um, kind of one thing that's really great about this company is that they want to make sure that they're 100% transparent with you. And the other thing that they do with every single bottle of oil that you buy, there's a third party test that you can reference. So you can know exactly what's in it, exactly what that THC is, because as Dr. Weaver mentioned, there's been lots of studies where people go buy this stuff out on the market and there's E. coli in it. There's, um, you know, 1.5% of THC when it's supposed to be 0.3. Uh, if you're getting the isolate version because you, you are, want to avoid THC, you want to make sure that you are avoiding the THC. So there's a lot of different uh, ways that this company is special, and I'm happy to answer any other questions about our products um, after this is over. But Jim? Is it grown organically and away from other farms? Yes, yeah, so, um, right. Mm -hmm. um, so we actually just planted our um, first USDA certified organic crops. And in order to get that, you have to be growing by organic standards without any herbicides or pesticides for over 10 years. So, um, you know, they, these guys really know what they're doing, and I think we have a product that, that shows that. Any other you want to tell them about the kit? Because I thought the kit was like just yeah, so Yeah, cool. so um, one of the ways that I got involved in this company is, um, you know, they, they came up with all these products, and it was a little bit of a hodgepodge. I, right love now. Um, I remember when I received this, I was like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. Yeah, so there's... Um, I'll let you... I'll set it up here so people can look. There's a way for you to purchase a kit. It's $299. It comes with five oils and two of the topical creams. Um, so it's $600 worth of product. Um, it's a pretty good deal. And what that does is kind of enables you to purchase for yourself or purchase for friends. So if you have people that... Um, Know, want to know about these products and want to know where to get a great brand, um, you can do it that way. So uh, the kit comes with you know, both the full spectrum products, the THC free version, uh, the creams, and then we also have a pet line. Um, you know, all mammals have an endocannabinoid system. So if your pet, you know, your dog has arthritis or they have anxiety during thunderstorms, um, that is a great option for your pet as well because like um, I said earlier, to avoid any kind of prescription where able, uh, especially for you know, your furry friends, is a good thing to help with their work and development. So. How do you give it to me? So you, there are, you know, my dog, um, I have a boxer, he's 80 pounds, he's a big guy. Um, I can just put it right in his mouth, he'll take it. Uh, some people give it to them in a little square of bread or in a treat. Some people put it in their food, so um, it's easy to get to. And how do you know on pets how much to give them? There, it's a weight-based okay. dosing range. Um, okay. And same thing with us, if you have chronic pain, and you want you want to go on the higher end of that weight range. So it'll give you, you know, a 12 to 15 pound dog can take X to Y amount. Okay. So all based on the pet's weight. Where does North Carolina stand legally with all this? Is kind of the... We're good. Finally. <laughs> yeah. Finally, we're good. I mean, we're not 100% good on the whole entire plant, but for CBD and hemp, we're finally good. <laughs> um, and I think eventually more and more um, states are... All, all right now, all states can sell hemp and CBD. Yes. The um, thing of the farm bill. Um, yeah, that was in... Night. It was. Um, it just happened. Trump signed it in December of 2018. There you go. So that's why that's why you're seeing CBD everywhere yeah, now. The, okay, the THC is that what's called. Mm -hmm. Why would anybody want the one without that? Because you said you could still be tested 
and it wouldn't show up. On so that has the psychoactive part of the plant. Yeah. Sometimes, so like, why would anybody want not want that? I think a lot of times it's still, there's just a misunderstanding of the product, right? And that's why we wanted to have an education class tonight. People see it and they say, oh, I don't want that. I don't want, you know, I don't want any THC in my system. And they are just dead set on that version. Um, but a little bit of THC is going to, and that way, that what they found is like 0.3 THC is actually beneficial because you're getting the whole component of the plant and it kind of all works together. Mm -hmm. So the full spectrum is really where it's at because right. um, that's where you're getting. And so if it's not full spectrum, it's not that it's not as good, but it is not as good. <laughs> it's not going to work as good because, yeah. you know, the plant kind of all works together. And so, you know, to be able to kind of separate because we don't want too much, obviously, THC, um, but be able to separate it and know what's not the psychoactive part that's still safe and that, that works together for the plant and for the olds that we're using that we found is 0.3 of the THC. So that's that's been very beneficial to know that. But isn't she great? And I'm so glad that you were able to come um, kind of share the whole story. That was actually the first time I really heard the story. As soon as, like, I don't know if you reached out to me or if I reached out to you. Yeah. I don't know how it happened. Mm -hmm. um, and then and when I started researching Green Compass and doing videos and learning, I was like, oh, my gosh, this company is, like, right on track with everything. Um, and to, to have organic, that's very hard to get. Um, Metagenics has been working on it forever. They actually had to work with another company called Ananda, which is a big company as well. And Metagenics just finally just kind of worked with them. But it's been, like, so long. Like I said, we just like Trump signed the thing in 2018 and so 2019. So you're going to see more and more of it come. Um, but it's nice to know that these companies have been actually trying for years to get it on board for the public. So is the preferred versus the retail, is that like an auto ship? I mean, what makes you prefer? Yeah. So it's an auto ship method. Um, you know, one thing when you hear about auto ship, it's, like, Oh, do I have to pay a fee to get auto ship? There's no fee. There's no, you know, contractual time frame that you need to do this in. So you'll get an email five days before your shipment's ready to be processed, and you can say, you know what, I don't need that right now. I need that in four weeks, and you can change the date, no problem. Is there a length of time that you have to get the next shipment, though? Nope. You can okay. you so could order you this once it. a year if you wanted yeah, to. Yeah, you could go six months or a year if you wanted to. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's why we want I mean, we have some stock here, um, but we'd rather you guys order, because I, I love for everybody to order what we can online, but I know some things that you can't order online. And so this one you're able to order online, which is great. Um, and so you're able to get that we can do it cheaper, reviews, cheaper price. Get, yes, exactly. So you get cheaper price with that. And um, with, the, with the kit, it has... If you want, you know, it has the lotions and stuff that kind of you talked about, which yeah. is kind of neat. There's, uh, yeah, there's two lo there's two topicals. Um, one is the Soothe, which is really great for skin conditions, eczema, paralysis. There's also a Relief. It's the same thing as the Soothe, but it has menthol in it as well. So if you have achy muscles, um, you know, it, that's a really great option too. So the cooling sensation of menthol. This has been studied for years, I guess. And um, so... What are they saying about long-term uh, side effects? They have not found any. After studying for five, ten years? They have not found any. That's what's cool about working with the plant. Now, it can counteract with some medications that people are on that I said they can't take it because they're on certain medications. And those medications are going to be interfering with your liver. So if you have a certain medication that's really hard on your liver, like if you're taking something and they're like, your doctor has to check your liver every six weeks. Do you have one of the, you know, I'm talking about these medications. If they have to check your liver every six weeks, then CBD, you really can't do because it will interfere with that medication. Um, and so I have to weigh out kind of weigh out those things, unfortunately. Um, but another thing is they're just finding out more, um, Madeline, about the genetics behind it. So the only side effects I was talking about was like certain clients, like the reason you know, the founder of Green Compass came, she had postpartum depression and it helped her. But then there was that other client that had 
um, was taking it and got more depressed. So those are the type of side effects that we're seeing, and but we're figuring out why is because more of the genetics and how they process things, and that's why there's more research being done on that. But we haven't found anybody like because if you take a seizure medication, one of the side effects of a seizure medication is seizures. That's a side effect. Um, with CBD, there's not. <laughs> so it's just kind of interesting. Can you take it while fasting? How long fasting? Intermittent. 16 yeah. Hours. Yeah, you're fine. Mm -hmm. So there, there's the two creams she was talking about there. And I love the ingredients of the creams, too. It's, it's CBD, obviously, it's in it. But there's other great, like, everything I read on the ingredients is Dr. Weaver improved. Like, I love all of their stuff. <laughs> um, and then Metagenics, we mentioned that they just came out with the Hemble. It came out June 10th. And it's already on back order and blah, blah, blah. So we're, like I said, we're getting that in, too. So, And they can't even list how much CBD's in there. You have to go to the website. But what I've been told is one, one milliliter is 15 milligrams of CBD. Um, but you can actually go to the website and find out this. This is probably what Green Campus does, too. You can find out specifically your lot number and product number. And it's been tested to figure out how much CBD is in that bottle, which is real. That's the true quality that we're talking about. Because how many, if you were to buy CBD down the street, how sure are you you're getting that right dosage of CBD? That's the, that's the question there. So, again, thank you so much. I know I've kept your time, and I hope you guys got a lot of information from this. Does anybody else have any further questions? Um, yes. How long has Green Compass been in business? Yes, they just launched February 6th. Also, you know, pretty new. Brand new. Um, four months and some change in, um, you know, we're working with the Sheffield Group, which is a consulting agency based in uh, Arizona. So we have, you know, cannabis attorneys, corporate attorneys, and there's multiple attorneys and lots. You have to pay <laughs> for all those fees yes. when you're dealing with this, for yeah. sure. And um, the, but I was also say, you know, it's been out since February. But how great, how good has the company done since then? Yeah. So um, <clears throat> in four months, there's been over three million dollars worth of sales. So um, you know, the company surpassed its one year goal in 45 days. Um, so they are. <laughs> Loving they're life. Trying, they're doing they're loving life. <laughs> so. Yeah, and and just the the outreach, uh, and it's kind of cool because it's like this started in Wilmington. I think it's kind of going to Charlotte, but I think everybody else is starting to hear about it. Um, and it's just a really good company to work with, and the support that you get behind the company is unbelievable. Because um, Metagenics, they gave me the video and they gave me some other stuff, but Green Compass actually has so much resources. Where you know, if you were to buy other company, getting the resource, are you getting the right information? And so it's just really nice to, to work with these type of companies that know and not, like I said, are doing the research and, and having the good quality stuff. At the beginning, you mentioned um, somebody, the government, the North Carolina government was working with one of these companies for um, quality or something like that, studying it over years. Oh, Metagenics has been for to get Metagenics qualified. It's been working for years and years and years. So because they they're legalized. See, Green Campus anybody can get anybody. You guys can get that. You know, which is great. We did have a link on there, but you guys can just get that Metagenics. You have to come through a doctor to get that. So the standard of that is what I was talking about. It took them just now till June, but they've been working on this for years. But because of the logistics. And and everything behind it, and all the attorneys and lawyers, and every, and the pharmaceutical companies want to take them down. You know the things that we had to fight with behind the scenes. It's really hard. Um, and something John's been working. I mean, he just got Australia right. The whole country. He's meeting with the ambassador of Australia um, just in April to get to get the marijuana plant legalized to help with Olivia Newton John's wellness center. Um, but it's just you know it's sad because the. They want to keep it out. They don't want you guys to have this. Right. Um, and if you can get it, get it now because we don't know. I mean, they could literally sign another bill and we don't have access to it again. I get my hands slapped and you can't sell it anymore, you know, and that's that's frustrating as a doctor to know that this stuff is out there and I can't get it to patients. It's been it's like. It's been sad that I couldn't do it. So it's now really nice to have this open door and this relationship. We don't know how long it will last, but let's keep rolling with it. Because uh, just in the last year, 
There was another bill that was passed. <laughs> okay, I got 705. I really got, this is the last statement. Um, they were really close of like not letting you guys buy. And I don't know if you guys even heard about this where you guys couldn't buy vitamins anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was going to be a prescription only to buy supplements and vitamins. And, of course, that didn't get qualified, but they're working towards this, that you guys can't just buy turmeric anymore. You know, you guys, it's crazy. But, yeah, it's happening. Um, and we've been fighting, and us as chiropractors, we've been fighting this for a long time to, you know, for this wellness industry. And it's a fight. Um, but, you know, with the more people that stand, it's really you guys. It's really the people that are making the stand that want it, that's supporting it. Um, because these people that are making billions of dollars, this pharmaceutical industry is going down, is slowly going down, and they're seeing that. And so where are people buying? They're buying supplements and vitamins, you know, and so they're wanting to take all that down. Um, but right now it's available, and let's use it and speak up and do the best we can as the people. So, all right, yes. One more question. So, I mean, we can stay here all night. I know we can stay here all night. Go ahead, Sammy. My husband saw something on TV, and I sort of caught a glimpse of it. Was like some people in Florida got um, arrested because they have CBD. Yes. Yeah, so, can you like say I go visit my son in Georgia? That I was Disney it. World. They went in Disney World. So they had CBD, a grandma had CBD in a backpack, went to Disney World. They didn't really get arrested. They just said you couldn't take it to Disney World. I think they kind of, I don't know if that's what you're talking about. That's, yeah. Yeah. yeah um, because, like I said at the very beginning, CBD is actually considered a drug. The pharmaceutical company said this is a drug, and they labeled it as that. So that's why Walt Disney, I mean, Disney World didn't want that in. So it was Disney World that yeah. made that decision. It wasn't the state of Florida. So The TSA actually just updated their travel guidelines, and it's now approved to fly domestically with it. So it's part of that. Well, that's good. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that's good. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to take a We're going to go.